Hey game makers! Happy belated new year! <laughs> um, hope you've all had a really great Christmas and hot and, and Christmas and holiday? Christmas, New Year's, whatever other things you celebrate holiday? If, if you even holiday, I don't even know. Anyway, um, I don't like making a big deal of Christmas and New Year's. To me, it's mostly just this ball of stress with family being like, you need to come enjoy Christmas, and it's like, can I just enjoy hanging out with you? Why do I have to Christmas? But that's just me whining. Anyway, um, hope you've all had a wonderful holiday, and, and, and thank you for watching this video. I, 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 I want to say something here. I want to say, thank you for enjoying my videos for the past however long you have been, and I hope you enjoy them in 2019 as well. Sure, let's go with that! <laughs> um, I'm not good at those kinds of things. Not off the fly. Not, n d d d d d d d d Anywho, welcome to the Gaia's Melody Echoed Memories Devlog 7. Yeah. <laughs> um, so as far as progress goes the last month, I am super happy because we pretty much finished chapter 2, and that's all of this! Wow, this this might not have been a good idea, just, just go off to, uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so, um, chapter two is done, with the exception of some of the scenes aren't voiced yet, um, couldn't voice over the holiday because people in my house, and, um, I haven't done the monsters, the sprites, or the statting of them. They're all placeholders right now. They're all entered, so I don't need to do much, but, um, they're not done yet. They're what I'm gonna be doing next. But oh my goodness! Okay, so chapter two! Um... In the original, chapter two is the part where I'm establishing all of the- well, uh, not all of them, but a bunch of different characters sort of... Uh... Let, let's just go for the term story setups. Um... And... It's... Uh, there, there are so many cutscenes, but... They're, they're all, like, emotionally heavy cutscenes, and I feel like they're just trying to, like, emotionally traumatize, um, uh, it's like a battle royale for which story setup can be the most emotionally traumatizing for the character. Um, oh my gosh. It's just, uh, I, I, I did not remember that, at, like, it, it's been quite a while since I've played this game, but... Ugh, there are so many of them, and they're each trying to, like, outdo each other. Every time you think it's like, oh, that was sad, it's like, oh, <laughs> that happened! Um, but there are, like, a bazillion cutscenes here. And normally, as, as, as you'd be playing the game, it'd be more spaced out, right? Because, you know, you're, you're playing the game, and same with when you're making the game. You do, like, the castle area, and then you do, you know, the city, and then you'd sequentially you do the NPCs, you do the treasures and stuff, and I'm doing all that, but I'm doing it as sort of a batch, um, because, because this is a remake, I have, wow, you are not the best NPC to example here. You? You, you have four pages. There, okay. So, because my, my variables actually weren't overly terrible in this game, I can just enter this as I go, right? So I don't have to go back and do all of the extra NPC dialogue. Like every time you'd, you know, um, every time you change, uh, not not change a variable. Every time you continue a plot point, and everyone would have to be updated their text, right? Because you know they can only be like, ah, the monsters are attacking for so long after you, you know, fight the monster problem. But um, because I'm doing that all in advance, what's happening is <laughs> I'm going through cutscene withdrawal, cutscene withdrawal, cutscene. Burnout? Maybe? I don't know. So, you do the maps, okay, and then you do all the NPCs, and then you do the treasures. At least, that's my system right now. And then you do the cutscenes. And that's all fine and good, except the cutscenes take the longest amount of time. It's like, after you get all this area, and a lot of this is like, back and forth, I guess? So, y you come back to, to Merrick a lot, and, um... <laughs> It's just like, oh, how many more cutscenes can we put here? Oops, crap. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to, um, to not having to do cutscenes. I'm gonna do monsters and statting next. Um, 
which is not my favorite thing in the world, but it, it beats writing cutscenes. Not that cutscenes are difficult or take very long or any, well, they take forever, but it's just there are, are like so many of them that's just, my eyes just hurt from looking at it so much. Um, something else I did in regards to cutscenes, anyway, is, um, I went through the, um, uh, all of them, actually, all of the voice clips, and, um, I uh, went through and limited and normalized them, um, so they should all be closer to around the same volume now. Um, it's a thing I did before on some videos, but I just didn't have a good way of doing it for individual voice clips. Like, um... Uh, I don't think I can... Oh, well, maybe. Let's see. Okay, I can't do that. Um, how I record them is I'll, I'll do a big batch of, of, of uh, the, the, all the dialogue for the scene as, as a test recording sort of thing, and then I'll siphon it up into the, each individual sound file. Where are you? I can just show ya. And then name them sequentially and put them in here. Um, that way when I get uh, other voice actors and I can just easily replace the clips. It's all in, it's not a problem, and then you just test it and it's fine. Um, but I didn't have a good way to normalize my voice clips, because I didn't really know. Like, I knew that was a thing, I just didn't know how it worked. So I did some research and that seems to have worked rather well. I'm still going to re-record uh, any of the clips that have, like, clipping or whatever, but I need to know which characters I'm actually going to be playing <laughs> let's say. So, I'm not gonna do that yet. Um, I also got the INSs worked out completely. I'm actually gonna show you because it's pretty interesting how I'm doing it. So, the INSs, it's short for Insight, and where is one of them? Um, where are you? This map? Uh, this one. I cannot for the life of me see these anymore. <laughs> I thought maybe putting the uh, equal signs would help me see them better. I wish I could bold them, to be perfectly honest. That would be great. Okay, so the INSs are short for insight. They show up on the corner. You can, uh... Right now I have it set to alt. I'd prefer it to be... Shoot. I don't remember... Oh, insert. Because <laughs> INS. But, um, I couldn't get it to bind with insert. So, this is what we got, an R2 on the controller. And what this does is it bring up, brings up this little menu, so you can select one and do a cutscene. I'm actually going to view a less consequential one, so not one that's rather spoilery. Uh, one of these is INS. It's you... Yeah. Um, this one. So, that is going to show up here. And then you just view them. <laughs> um, uh, I'm not actually sure how long this is gonna take. Recording slow down my my loading, and I'm pla I'm playing with a new um freeloader. I can't believe they left <laughs> um, me. I'll go into that in a bit, but I'm I'm using two preloaders right now, and I haven't tested it a super lot, so sure, here's hoping it doesn't break anything. Um, so the like INSs are the scenes that let you see what other characters are doing. In this case, it's Oko. They left me in the airship to die. Voiced by Sally and Ifo. That's what friends are. I don't need them. Because I can't do Oko's voice. What if I can't fight off monsters? So what if I don't know how to sword fight? I'm perfect just being me. Dude, you, you're doing pretty good on your own, bruh. I think there's an extra Where space there, I should get rid of that. Last year when the monsters start coming out. How oblivious are you, child? <laughs> I love Oko. I give him a hard time, but I love him. Um, so yeah, uh, uh I think that's a glitch. I think I fixed something and it broke. But um the uh oh, actually, I know exactly what that is. These two aren't normally on at the same time, so it's canceling it out. But, um, normally... Uh... Nope. This... This... It'll just load the entire list! And that's wonderful. Um, an issue I was having before in the original game was based on how I set it up, which was stupid is, um, 
I could only really have, like, one up at a time, and any that I had to, like, do, um, multiple ones was just a huge pain in the butt. But for this, it's nice and simple, because we just got this nice little INS thing. There are a bunch of these, so we're gonna find the one I'm looking for. They're just all set up here, and it's just great, because I can just input the data, and then teleport to the location. And I'm using uh, numbers to determine whether others are available or not. Um, so it'll just count, and if it uh, counts an odd number, or the wrong number, rather, it um, will just uh, continue or not continue to show them based on how many are actually active. And obviously they'll cancel out after a certain amount of time, like when you progress with the plot, they'll, they'll stop showing up. Um, but it worked out really well, and I'm really happy for that. Oh, my voice is scratchy. Oh, so yeah, um, if you follow me on Twitter, you might have seen a couple screenshots I posted of costumes, and... How many costumes there are now? Um, oh, let's go on a map that isn't gonna take 10 years to lit. To, to, to leg? Yeah, 10 years to leg. Oh, sure, this works. So, um, you've got, like, I think it's 67 of the in-game costumes, primarily based on the ones from the original game. And then you've got, uh, 13 of the swimsuit DLC costumes, one for each character. This is gonna take a second to load. And, and then you got all the extra costumes, bringing up a grand total of 80 s <laughs> 87 costumes. What? <laughs> Although, though, consider this, I do have 13 main characters, and anytime I do a set of costumes, so like, um, the... I feel like I'm talking really loud. The, uh, the swimsuit costumes, or the pajama costumes, or the GM1 costumes, they're all, like, 13 costumes each right there. So that's where the, um, big numbers of costumes come from. Oh, also, if you look at the pictures now, they zoom in. So, I'm thinking for the, for the DLC costumes, um, instead of, my, my original thought was you'd open the game after installing the DLC, it would give you this little, you've installed the DLC, and then you'd just use it. But I'm actually thinking of making it more adventurous than that. So, um, uh, it would notify you, of course, that you've installed the DLC, but it'd be a treasure box or something where you couldn't go and find it somewhere, and, um, I'm not sure how in-depth I want to go on this, but they might come with, you know, a little cutscene revolving around them. Or just, just some funny dialogue or something, depending on what they are and where they are and how you get them. I haven't thought too much about each individual costume or anything like that, but I was thinking it's more fun to just go and find them all than it is to just, here's, um, 20 costumes! <laughs> Enjoy! Um, but that's what I was thinking for that. Now, I'm not sure if I've actually brought this up, but how I'm handling the costumes is obviously their sprites will update. Um, they've also got their, their, uh, anime graphics or what have you. Um. That one's cute. Sure, why not? Okay, fine. So obviously their sprites update, and their, um, their graphics update. Um, this applies to their stand, walk, run, wind, climb sprites, but I'm not doing their battle sprites, because that <laughs> would be way too many. Um, this is a limited number. The battle sprites are just way too many animated going on. Um, so they stay in their normal costumes, like the original game. And their costumes during most cutscenes will reset to their default ones. Um, just because in my cutscenes I do a lot of character movements and, like, poses and dynamic looking things. Um, which doesn't make sense to do with 87 costumes. So those are, um, like the original game, kept the same. Um, little cutscenes where the characters are just like spread out or what have you, they'll retain their costumes. But um, it's gonna be a mix, just like the original. I don't have a better way of doing it, it's just the way I want to handle it. Um, there are locations throughout the game where the characters will update their face graphics um, in addition to the, uh, uh, how do I say this? Okay, so the game will lock you into certain costumes in certain areas, um, because plot reasons, and during those cutscenes, you will get updated face graphics to, like, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Faces. Faces are over here. <laughs> um, they'll be updated to like the pajama costumes and what have you. To keep consistency within the cutscene. Most of the costumes are just for fun anyway. So I'm not too concerned about that. But those ones will be um, consistent with what they're supposed to be. And because I get, um, okay, I had a really hard doing time doing this in XP because they didn't really have options for it, but I love that MV has options for sealing stuff, like weapons and armor and my costumes, um, because I just, I, I think I have a thing set up for it. Somewhere, maybe? Yeah, maybe I have it called something different. Um, but I can just seal and unseal the costumes when I need them, and that is just wonderful. But that does mean that some costumes will be mandatorily... Mandatorily? Is that a word? <laughs> um, the game will give it to you, uh, regardless of whether you picked it up. I'm still gonna leave the original ones in their original location. Like, you can pick up um, the PJ costumes for the, the Terralals kids in, um, in New Terra, in their bedrooms. Primarily, I think. But, um... One of these is, is that. Um, but there are a point, there are a point, there is a point where some of the characters need their PJ costumes, so I'm just gonna give them outright at that point. But you can still pick them up here, because why not? It's fun. <laughs> um, huh. It doesn't need to be there. Huh. That doesn't need to be there. I was clearly testing things. Okay. <laughs> oh, look, I did things. Um, oh, yes, and one last thing in regards to the costumes. I did finish the swimsuit DLC. It's confirmed all the characters get super adorbs swimsuits. <laughs> and then there's Doken, who just makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> actually, I, uh, <clears throat> when I'm doing test playing in, in debug mode, I have the characters set to randomize their costumes so I can spend more time checking for mistakes, writing them down, and seeing what I'm going to fix later. There's a scene out here, somewhere here. It's a nice little scene here, and I decided, okay, well, we're gonna, since a lot of the characters are involved, I don't want to do some insane thing where I have all the characters on the screen. Did that once, not doing that again. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> probably not doing that again. Anyway, so the characters all just flash in and out of the scene. So I'm here with randomized costumes, you know, testing along, and all of a sudden, Dogen pops up wearing practically nothing, and <laughs> I just burst out laughing, because it's like this... Not serious scene, but it's it, it's rather comical, especially given the previous couple scenes. But just Dogen shows up in his little uh, uh, bathing suit thing, <laughs> and it's just like, oh hi, Dogen. <laughs> Do you know the plot of this game? Why are you dressed like that? Anyway, so uh, I got a kick out of that so much so that I had to send a screen or a. Uh, uh, a cell phone screenshot, a picture, that's what those are called, uh, to Salia being like, so this happened, I laughed, it was funny. Salia was like, lol, that was the end of it. Um, so, something I was thinking of doing that's kind of fun is, um, after 100%ing the game, um, by that I mean, uh, getting all of the collectibles, uh, like the, the, the art gallery and the costumes and finishing the epilogue quest, I was thinking of unlocking debug um, mode, sort of. Not the full-on, you know, RM debug mode, but I do some little things here and there, like the, the randomized costumes. In mode 7, I have... Oh, I'll, I'll get to that in a second, actually. Um, in, in mode 7, I'm not going to have it... Uh, I'm not going to let the player turn around the camera just because reasons. Um, but I am using it for debug mode, especially in mode 7 theater, which I'll get to in a second. But I'm thinking of unlocking that too. Just my little control setup for, for playing around with it. Just for fun. Nothing, you know, no no reason, just for fun. Um, but just a little thing for unlocking, for, for beating everything. I think it'd be fun. Just a cool little neat thing. I'm not sure what else I'd add to that. Um, it'd just be like an option, maybe. Um, but any, any little things like the random costumes or whatever that I end up doing just as I go to test things, I think it'd just be fun. I get it. I, uh, I, I, I don't know. You know the drill I know, gamers! We're gonna split this up, so I'll see you next time, gamers! I said gamers twice. See you later, gamers!